what is sales growth? Uh, what does it mean to uh, grow your sales skills, teams, uh, or even uh, you know from money perspective? I'm basically going to teach you a methodology uh, to optimize and grow your sales teams, um, mainly from productivity point of view. And I, and I was thinking about what's the best way to describe uh, productivity. And uh, I see in the crowd here mainly, mainly guys. If you want to learn how to be very productive, just go and, and look at the ladies in, in, the, in the crowd. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Clap them. Guys, come on. <laughs> the ladies are in sales are real, real super, super women. Seriously. They can do millions of things. You can see their day scheduled as, as uh, nothing I've seen before. They do not take la long lunch breaks. They don't go and play ping pong uh, in, in the hall. And, and uh, I really watch uh, how they do that. And, and I think uh, that we can learn a lot from it. And of course, optimize even that. A little bit about me. Uh, 15 years ago, I founded Sysense, BI company, uh, as you said, raised $200 million. I, mean, I have a new startup, which is called Workies, so it's 202. <laughs> we raised. Uh, yeah, you, you need to start small uh, when, you, when you begin. Um, at Sysense, I've, uh, uh, I've built the entire inside sales team from uh, being two guys. I was the one who did everything from sales support, onboarding, everything. And then we grew to about uh, five, 550 people all around the world today, four regions. Uh, there are some people in the crowd here that are from Sysense, uh, really an amazing company. Uh, I got a little bored uh, about seven months ago and I joined Workies. We're doing uh, uh, a CRM for field service businesses. Not going to go into it. I'm just going to give you examples from my uh, uh, life uh, in uh, sales. I'm investing in many startups around the world and in Israel. Most of them are very successful. And I'm a painter. Um, that's, you know, a bit, uh, w when I have time, I don't have too much of it. First question to uh, all of you, and just just think about it for 10 seconds. If you had one thing you need to focus as sales, sales development, doesn't matter, whether it's number of customers or amount of money, what would you choose? You have only one to choose from. I know it's like the egg and the chicken, but I want you to think about your sales process, your sales team. What's more important? How many of you think the number of customers are more important? About 80%, okay? So I'm not going to ask the, you know, the other. <laughs> um, and and it's, it's basic and it's real true. Whenever you build a team and whenever the company is getting bigger, number of customers is always better than the amount of money. When you have customers that are happy, when you have large amount of customers that are telling it to other customers, you get more reviews, you get better case studies, and it brings more and more customers cheaper. When you focus on this kind of deals, which mainly in enterprise business, you see that a lot. Many of the Israeli companies, that's what they do. Uh, you see long processes, uh, you know, handful of customers to start with, but less than, you know, a few hundreds. You make a lot of money, but you find it very challenging to grow. And we clearly see that uh, uh, the amount of customers uh, correlates a lot to the amount. And uh, during this presentation, I'm basically going to teach you how to get more customers and not more money. More money is easy, just increase pricing. I've done it like 10 times in my life. It's never easy, but it's, it does the, the trick. The first uh, um, skill I'm going to teach you today is uh, all about communication. Think about uh, your life in the past five years, how it changed from um, you know, picking up the phone, sending emails, uh, to you know, and, and think about your personal life. How do you, how do you communicate with your uh, siblings? It's mainly chats. It can be WhatsApp, it can be Facebook Messenger, it can be just uh, the SMS that you send all over the place. And this kind of uh, uh, communication change uh, has gotten into uh, all of our sales development and sales all around the world. Uh, specifically at Workies, we use the intercom to uh, communicate with our entire customer uh, base. And we see more and more customers uh, prefer this as the first line of, uh, let's say, communication. They don't like to uh, call you. They don't like to send you emails. They like to chat. Embrace this uh, uh, application. Doesn't matter which you choose, uh, whether it's Drift, Intercom, you know, each of them has their own uh, pros and cons. But definitely embrace that. 
Just a few weeks after we embedded this in our website and later on in our application, we saw an increase about 30% in our revenue. How come? American customers and all over the world, it's, it's, bas it's very basic. They see the chat window in, in the, in the uh, website and they prefer to speak to you other than you just uh, you know, read or, or go on in the form. Most of us are lazy, whether you want it or not. We're lazy, our brain don't like to work. It's, it's a lot of psychology, we like to rest. And the easiest west way to get answers is this small icon on the right hand of the website or left. Embrace this. We're gonna talk about it uh, uh, more later about tips and tricks on how to uh, increase engagement over there, but definitely uh, do that. Um, more than that, chats are less formal. And I know that you guys are probably spending a lot of time or writing emails. Is this email great? Is this email not? Many of my uh, uh, colleagues here uh, know about my wall of shame. I had a wall of shame at SciSense because I'm making a lot of spelling mistakes as an Israeli uh, with a lot of uh, English phrases. You know what? I made, I made a business out of it because the other, this, the other side, you know, when, when I'm chatting with, with other people, it's less formal. So I, I, I allow myself to do mistakes and there, that's not a robot. That's not a guy that is writing the same phrases all the time and they like to speak with me. So I took it to the next step, animated GIFs. You need to see the animated GIFs we're sending, it's crazy. Like we started to send them, I started to send them and my, my uh, team told me, no, no, that's crazy, that's not formal. The clients will stop interacting with you, big mistake. We see more and more interactions from animated GIFs and the clients, our customers, which grew by the way about 200% in the last six months, started speaking to us with animated GIFs. Why? Because they do it with their kids and with their wives and husbands. Why wouldn't they do it with us? Less formal in chat means one thing, more customers and more happy customers. All you need to do is just to you know, make them smile. So instead of just, hey, how are you today? Just, I don't know, a Bugs Bunny that does that. Why not? You make them laugh, they feel related to you, they're gonna buy from you, it's very basic. Quota, everybody loves it, right? How do you guys set quota? How, how was your quota? I remember you, Dana, right? <laughs> nobody likes quota and nobody likes quota change. It's very, very challenging. Quota is, uh, is psychology. I, I, I have, you know, it's, it's, you can define quota in, in one world only. Psychology, it's psychological uh, effect on human beings and, and quota is all about gamification. Read about gamification uh, if, you, if you're setting quota for teams. Understand how to build a game, how to make a game that uh, uh, makes everybody wants to win. We had an experiment, a failed experiment uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, we increased the quota for the sales team in 150% and it actually came from them. They told us, we, we can do that. So, okay, let's, let's increase uh, the sales. They done uh, 20 accounts per month and uh, we, we uh, uh, changed the quota to 30, 30 accounts per month. And once we did that, you know what happened? They sold nothing, zero. The entire sales process was paused. They had the leads, they did demos, they interacted, they opened opportunities, but zero close. We tried to figure out what's, what's wrong. We did a lot of uh, uh, interviews with them. Again, we're, we're a small team, so it's fairly easy. And we figured out that uh, they didn't think it's gonna be that high or they, they thought that they're gonna win much more than, uh, than before. It's, it's, it was all about money, by the way. And, and I made a decision to go back. It's never easy as a CEO to make a decision like that. Uh, you're counting on the amount that you're gonna bring, you're counting on the amount of, of customers. But that was a very good decision because you know what happened the day we said, guys, okay, we go back, no, no problem. You're gonna get the same amount of leads, everything is good. The day we changed it, they started selling, I don't know, two, three times more than months before. They were just holding themselves. If you create a monopoly game, okay, and, and in the surprise uh, card, or uh, I don't know, danger or surprise, there are many terms to that. In the surprise card, you get go to jail, you don't wanna play this game. It's all about setting expectations and making them understand that they can win the game. And even to yourself, if you cannot win the game, you're not gonna play. Doesn't matter how good you are. But think about gamification, read about gamification. When you set quotas, it's crucial. Setting the right quota and the right pricing if, if you're doing product uh, stuff uh, is crucial for your company's success. Everybody wants to succeed. Not everybody should succeed. Um, you need to set quotas that about 80% of the teams 
uh, if the team members uh, will, 60% uh, of the team members will hit the quota, about 10% will, will overachieve, and, uh, and another 10 to 20% will underachieve. That's how most sales team in the world works, okay? Set the quota in the right way, but always set it to, the, to a place that they can win. If nobody wins, you're the only one who lost. Okay, remember that. Very few of us are, are, are thinking about that. We all came, come, came here to learn about, uh, you know, how to optimize sales development, how to optimize sales team. But what, what about yourself? When was the last time you sat down and set quota for yourself, but a personal growth quota? Not in numbers, but what do I want to do in the next five years? What do I want to do in the next three years? Set this goal and understand if what you're doing right now is the best thing that you can do. What do I need to learn? But le let's, let's do a quick uh, 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 Q&A here. Uh, how many of you are in sales development? Okay, about 40%. How many of you are managing teams these days? About the same amount. Sales? Cool. Sales leaders, I guess, the same one. Okay, cool. So we have a, a good mix here. Think about what is your next role in life, whether it's management. Not everybody needs to be managers. That's fine. I, is it biz dev? Is it sales? Is it sales development? Do you want to move to be in product role? What do you want to do? And set it as a goal, and every two weeks, learn something new that relates to this goal. Not to your day-to-day, -day, not to your quota, and definitely not to your job. I'm embracing this in my company and I've done it at Sisense. I think that personally, each and every one of you should grow as a personal human being, okay? The companies are great, the companies that you're working with, you know, it, it's, but it's just an entity, it's not yourself. Go home, think about it for a couple of minutes, not more than that, what do you wanna do? And then start planning ahead. Set yourself quarter, quarterly, monthly. I need to read this book, I need to sit with this guy in my company, I just need to, you know, ping, even ping me. I, I meet about uh, two, three people uh, every week, just helping them with their personal growth. Do it. Many Israeli guys, and we're in Israel here, it's all about personal relationship. Talk to each other. People can help you. Many of us are working in uh, te technology companies, companies that uh, sell products over online or offline, and they're missing, uh, um, they're missing a huge part. Uh, we're doing it size since I know that many big companies, uh, it's very clear to them to do that. Uh, but they're missing the, the brain or the guy, the smart guy behind the scenes. W what is pre-sales, in, in my opinion? I know that there is a role like this and it, it exists in many companies. But even in sales development, a guy that is uh, uh, capable of coding, a guy that is capable of uh, thinking out of the box, bringing third-party solutions to, to connect with your solution, can help you a lot with your sales. I found a lot of uh, the sales that I've done in my past life and also in the current company are, uh, uh, are closing and we're winning over a company just because of the smart guys uh, in the room. You should bring a pre-sales guy, a technical guy, a guy who can code, a guy who is very creative and think out of the box and embed it with the sales team. He's a quota-oriented guy or, or a girl. They need to understand why they're doing that, and they need to win when the team wins. It means that uh, when, when you're doing, uh, uh, I don't know, you're doing a stand-up, or you're going uh, to Mexico to do sales training, you take this person with you. The reason is that when this guy feels part of the team, he can be the biggest win uh, ever. When we added it in, in, uh, in my past company, in Sisense, and also at work is we have these kind of guys, we clearly see an increase in sales and in sales that were impossible before. We don't overpromise, we don't oversell anything, even when, when you're, you're doing sales development. Don't sell what you don't have, set expectations, but do uh, explain that you have technical team that can solve almost any problem on earth. Many of the products these days can be attached to each other easily using API. And if you know how to use them, and if you have the pre-sales guy, he can help you a lot, again, in sales development and within uh, sales. It's, it's the edge of machines. Uh, and there is a lot of automation involved uh, in, the, uh, in the past few years. Many of you are using it as part of you know, the marketing uh, 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 teams that are uh, generating leads for you. But it's very important to understand these kind of concepts in sales development, in, uh, in sales. 
you can bring infinite amount of leads, but you don't have infinite amount of time, and you definitely don't have infinite amount of focus. You need to focus on what's important and what's selling. Try to look in sales dev, in sales, for tools that can automate this, uh, uh, um, this process. And tools that can take all the leads flow and tell you this lead and this lead and this lead should be uh, uh, contacted. And the rest, just forget about them. Use automation. If you focus on leads that are more likely to buy, you basically optimize your time in a better way. There are many tools. At Sysense, we use a tool called Infer. Basically, decreased our amount of leads about 30% and increased, of course, our revenue because we focused on only on stuff that was ma uh, important. There are many machine learning tools like that. Just find the right one for you. It, this can be done also manually. And again, you don't have to be a data scientist or a data analyst to do that. Just look at your leads. Who are you selling to? Are you selling to a specific country? Are you selling to a specific persona? Gather more information from your entire team and figure out who you need to speak to and who are the only leads that you need to uh, uh, spend time with. Otherwise, you're basically spending your time. And I know it's pretty obvious, but look, about, look on tools like Infer that can help you to filter that. <laughs> And if you're working with hundreds of leads every month, it's definitely time to uh, go on, uh, uh, on a journey with such a tools. If you want to convince your managers to use them, just convince them by telling them, if we increase the contact rate by 20%, well, what will it do to the quota? What will it do to the pipeline? From a manager perspective, from a CEO perspective, very easy. Leads are very costly, and you're, you're very costly, and if we can optimize that, easy, easy decision. Okay? This tool, by the way, costs $40,000. But if, if it brings 10, 20% more contact rate, or it, it's obvious uh, decision. What kind of growth tools I'm, I'm, uh, we're using at uh, Workis these days? Um, we mainly, as you, you may notice here that we use mainly intercom. Uh, we think the chat apps uh, are the future of every sales developer, guys, uh, and we're using them also in support by in sales, but mainly sales development. Uh, within Intercom, we're using an answer bot, which uh, non-technical guy is trained. Basically, all the, you know, how much, how much does it cost? Uh, or uh, how do you do this or that? 30% of our interaction these days are being answered automatically, and we don't have an easy-to-use tool. It's not uh, a fairly easy tool. It's, it has millions of, of features. If you train these machines to answer instead of you, you basically get more and more leads and more and more opportunities into your pipeline. Use them. It's not very costly and it's fairly easy to, uh, to accomplish. We use Intercom for marketing automation and again, non-technical people are using them and I'm not getting anything from Intercom, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan just because it increased our sales in about 30% and it, it just keep on growing with them. Uh, we're using as a CRM HubSpot. Uh, HubSpot gives us a lot of automation. Again, for non-technical people within sales, my head of sales is sitting here uh, somewhere. Uh, he's handling all the workflows. He's very non-technical. And it's fairly easy to take a lead and do something with it, create a sequence or anything like that. Use tools that are uh, for non-technical people. If you're part of sales, use these tools, pay for them, and you, you can see a huge uh, growth. Uh, I used Gong at Sysense uh, for sales, crucial tool. I don't, I don't see any tool uh, around it uh, in, in the world. There are many competition, competitors in that field. What Gong does is basically recording uh, the meetings and uh, extract and ex extrapolate insights. So whether you talk about discount pricing, what, what's the time that you do that, they transcribe everything and they give you a lot of uh, uh, insights regarding that. Once the team is larger than 10 people, these kind of tools are a must. And believe it or not, you will hire less people and more and less people will do the same amount of work using these kind of uh, tools. Uh, for, of course, for analytics, we use Sysense. Don't make decisions without data. Do me a favor. Okay, it's very easy to uh, make decisions and to fail using them, uh, but uh, any analytic tool in that sense w makes, uh, makes perfect uh, sense, I guess. Uh, other than that, um, growing, growing sales is very much like growing product or scaling sales, sales development. Experiment. Experiment as much uh, as you can. Experiments can be done in various different frameworks. Experiments are not uh, uh, solo just for the managers to come out with. Any of the employees within the company can suggest experiments. Let's, let's give you some example of experiments we're doing. 
so the animated GIF was an experiment. Half of the population got, hey, how are you? Glad you joined. And the other half got, I don't know, an animated uh, Pluto or uh, Mickey Mouse. Better conversion rate. Uh, an experiment so one guy uh, suggested. I just broke your... Uh, Yes, that's an experiment. Uh, I don't remember my piece. So. By um, another experiment was to uh, get um, in the sign up page, we say, glad you joined. See you on the other side. 20% increase in, uh, in uh, conversion rate. Now, that's the SDRs or the sales are, are instructing the marketing to, to do that. Why? Because, again, there is no taboo, there is no, nothing. Uh, uh, more interesting than seeing the sales that are working with customers, that are interacting with customers, coming up with these, these ideas. And once they get more leads, they're very happy. Day, day one. Get the team into growth sessions, into experiment sessions. It can be emails, you probably do that all the time. But why, why, why won't you go to the product team and ask for, you know, suggest some stuff? I believe that sales and sales development are the best years. For the entire for the entire company, and if you don't speak with them, you basically uh, uh, it's a loser situation for everybody. So definitely create uh, uh, gross uh, experiments, and again there are many frameworks. Uh, I'm not going to suggest one. It's it can be an Excel. Uh, it's very it's it's related to uh, uh, to your personal growth, but uh, I do believe that you need to read a lot. Uh, I'm a very uh, I guess bad student, I was a very bad student, until I found my, the best way that I can learn, which is Audible. Um, I'm, I'm listening to a, book, uh, to a book a week right now, and I'm learning every week, I'm learning two to five different uh, methodologies that I can work with. And believe it or not, every time it works, because that's experience. Learn from these books, I'm gonna recommend some books, but again, there are millions of books out there. Uh, just try to focus on what you're trying to achieve at this point. Um, we are conducting uh, bi-weekly sessions with sales. So if you don't have it in your company, ask the product to do that. As much as you learn about your product, you'll be a better sales guy. You're not sales guys, you're a consultant. If you're not gonna consider yourself at, at, as, as a consultant, you're basically going to uh, lose leads to competition. Israelis are, uh, I think, Again, it's very easy to say it in, in this room, but uh, we, we're, we're, we're thinking out of the box. We're very smart. We're doing stuff very unlike the, the, the outer world because we're, we don't like structure. Use it as a benefit. Americans like, and I know that there are many, many Americans in the crowd, but you're here right now, and you see that doing one, two, three, one, two, three is great, but it's not amazing. And we all want to be amazing. The only way to be amazing is to learn every day something new. Read blogs, not just about the sales process, but about the product in your industry. Okay, listen to books or read books, whatever fits you. And create a sales toolbox that will grow your team in a much, uh, I guess, a better uh, pace. Uh, one thing that we, we always do in, in companies that I'm investing in or in my company is creating resistant map. What does it mean? You take the entire sales and SDR team and ask them, what are the common resistant factors that you guys have? And then you ask, how do you guys overcome them? And everybody is speaking. And you get one guy and ask him, write everything down. And then you create a white paper, internal white paper, or a decision tree. So any new guy within the sales process can read this uh, uh, decision tree and have uh, its way to, you know, it's a battle card, basically. But for many things, like pricing, like competition, like stuff that, oh, I don't have any time. Oh, that's great. I have one last question. That's, by the, by the way, one of the best tips I ever got. Always say, okay, I have one last question. So the guy on the other side thinks that you go away, but you never go away. You, you still have more and more like one last questions. Okay? Use these kind of tricks. They're working. They are working. Uh, process analysis, don't do anything without numbers. Do me a favor. Okay? We talked about it from, from, from the Sysons perspective, but it doesn't matter. Use it in Excel. See your baseline, how, what is your contact rate, and if you do one thing different today or this week, what does it do to your, con to your contact rate? Just create a process that you can analyze, and if you don't, please don't change anything, okay? It doesn't make any sense. Um, competition, we all have competitions, right? But competitions are not just about the money. Guys, remember, people love to play. It's not about the, the prize. 
So uh, where is Uri? Uri? Uri came out, I don't know if it's your idea, but uh, he came out with, with this idea. We have a WhatsApp group. We're forcing Americans to install WhatsApp, which is great. Uh, and, and he said, you know what, guys, we have, I don't know, 80, 90, 100 uh, uh, new accounts we, we need to uh, deal with uh, this month. So we're doing a decreasing amount. So, and any guy that closed uh, a deal should find a funny picture uh, with the amount of so 66, 65, and so on. And, and I, I love this idea because it's a game. Instead of the boring gong, you suddenly see people over the chat all day, like, let's do it, guys, and, and so on. And, and it's a culture that's being created over the chat. Just embrace new tools and get these ideas. Like, uh, I, I love it when my team is com coming up with this, this kind of I never told you this, Uri, but th this is an amazing idea. Because it just started it, and once it's like, uh, uh, you know, a bomb. He, he puts the fire and everybody are, are uh, on it. Just embrace these kind of ideas. It's creating an amazing, amazing competition, internal competition. People love this thing. Um, last before the Q&A, it's books that I read and I recommend to any sales development or sales guys. Uh, the first one is all about um, you know, winning friends and influencing people. I do believe that sales is all about relationship. Uh, if you haven't read it, it's a very old book, uh, still very relevant today. It's talking about anything from uh, deconstructing resistance in support and it can be in sales too, uh, down to winning the big, biggest accounts ever. It's all about the people. One of the tips that I'm giving from, from this book to my, my sales guys, just remember one fact about the other person. Not about their pains, not about you know, what company they work, just that their wife's name is Beth, or the cat's or their dog's name is, I don't know, Andy. And if you remember that and you'll ask, how's Andy doing? Believe it or not, you just got a friend. And this friend will buy from you over and over again. That's crucial in sales. Don't be superficial about it. Uh, it's, it, you cannot, it needs to come from the right place, of course. And this book is amazing uh, doing that. Unrelated to sales, but uh, everything that I taught you here is coming from a book called Hacking Growth. It's mainly for product, but believe it or not, sales is a product. And treat it as a product, and you'll grow your uh, uh, performance in a great way. Uh, that's that's a uh, uh, great uh, book about demos, how to create demos, and um, Demos usually correlates with presenting something over the screen. That's absolutely wrong, guys. A demo is you and the other guy over the phone transferring information to each other. It's not the slides. It's never about the slides. It's always about the listening and what you, you, what you discuss, active listening, we, we can call it. Uh, great demo is part of it, of course, teaching you on how to structure demos and, and so on. That's it for today. If you have any questions, that's the right time. Thank you.